Today's topic is fraction decomposition. So if you are in pre-calc, this is, you just do what we're doing. If you're in calculus, then this is uh, actually leading up to partial fraction integration. But either way, we still have to get this skill down. So I think the best way to teach this is by way of an example. So let's start with this one. Now one way you can think of fraction decomposition is unadding fractions. What is going on here is we are thinking of this as the answer to an addition of fractions problem. And what we got to do is come up with what these were. So I know that's weird, but here's how you do it. You start by factoring, if possible, the denominator. Now, this, there's different flavors of these problems depending on the denominator. This particular one they call uh, distinct linear factors. Now, I don't require people to memorize that, but what that means is when you factor it, they are different from each other. They are distinct. They're not repetitive and they are linear, which means there's no squares or cubed. So this is kind of the basic kind of problem where they're different from each other and they're just regular x's. That's what that means. Well, why do we do that? Because the concept here is I can think that this fraction came from the addition of these two fractions after I got common denominators, right? Because I'd have to multiply this by that and that by this, Right? See what we're doing? The problem is we don't know what the numerators are. So we have to put a couple variables up there until we figure it out. We don't want to use x because we already used that. Most textbooks, I think every textbook I've ever seen, uses capital A, capital B, if we have more, capital C. All right, so now you've got to shift gears kind of. And you go, okay, I get that. In theory, I could add these to get that answer. I see how the denominators work out, but what do I do with it? Well, now you're going to put that on hold, quit thinking about that, and entirely focus over here. And let's actually add the fractions. In order to do that, I would have to multiply top and bottom by x minus 2 here, and x plus 3. And that would give me... ax minus 2a over that common denominator plus bx plus 3b over the common denominator. Then I would be permitted to combine those on the right hand side. And that gets me there. That's an important place to get to. Now let's pause it for a minute. I want to make this hopefully very clear to you. Think for a minute of two basic fractions with common denominators. Right? See so equals, same denominator. And let's say I put an x here and a 6 here. What would x be? And you should have come up with 6 pretty quickly. But what I want you to really think about is how you got the 6. Was it math or was it logic? If it was math, then you did this in your head. I don't think you did that. I wouldn't have done that. If it was logic, then what happened is this. You said, okay, the fractions are the same. The denominators are the same. The top's got to be the same too. You, you didn't think those words but that's what you realize, that those have to be the same. The bottoms are the same. The fractions are equal. That means the tops have got to be the same. Now, at first, people who are new to this don't see how that's possible. All they are, it's like one-half and two-fourths. They look different, 
but underneath they are the same thing. If, if I knew what all these variables were and I plugged them in, I get the same number. These are the same thing, but they look different. So what that means is I can just say this because of logic. I do not want to cross multiply that thing. I do not want to do that. Now look at what I have here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to organize this as follows. See how there are x terms and there are non-x terms? I'm going to put a number sign there. I mean constant. So this is saying, so look, the, a, the x term here plus the x term here has to equal the x term there. And the non-x term plus the non-x term has to equal the 11, the non-x term. Now let's talk about this one for a minute. Literally, I would have this, right? ax plus bx equals 7x. But notice that I could divide both sides of the equation by x, and all those x's cancel out, and I'd be right here. So I'm kind of skipping a step when I do that, Right? And we're just stripping the x off and writing the coefficients down, but this is why that's legal. All right, now what this creates is called a system of linear equations. And we've done those in the past. Usually you see it in Algebra 2. There's a few ways to solve it. I'm going to use elimination. So what I want to do is I want to make that positive 2a so that when I combine these, they equal 0 and they're gone. So in order to get that to happen, I'm going to multiply that whole equation by 2. And this one I'm just going to recopy. And when I add those column-wise, this drops out. That's why it's called elimination method. And I get B equals 3. Now I am running out of room, so I'm going to have to clear some space here. I'm going to get rid of all this work here. So if you had that in your notes, you would still see all this. And then I got to this point where b equals 3. Well, if b equals 3, a plus b is, I could use either one of these equations. Now that I know 3, I'm going to pop that into one of the equations and figure out what a is. So now that I know b is positive 3, that tells me that a is 4. So b is 3 and a is 4. Well, I just erased. I had a over, oh, a over, There, that should be what I erased. So now that I know what A is, I know that this would be 4 over x plus 3 plus 3 over x minus 2. So my original fraction, which I believe was, no, not that, 7x plus 11 over x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to those two fractions. I What I did is I took a fraction and I decomposed it into the two things that make it up. I unadded the fractions. All right, I know that that's kind of weird, but you got to get through your first example before you get through your second. So let's do another one. Um, I'll try to keep more of it on the board at one time so you can see the whole problem at once. I will tell you that I tweaked it a little bit so I don't get these nice integers. What if A and B are fractions? How do you handle that? So it's a slight tweak. More important is just watching the flow of the problem. All right. So now that you watched me kind of walk through one of them, let's do it again. 
just with a different problem here. So let's try 3x minus 4 or x squared minus 6x plus 8. First thing, as I understand, I'm trying to unadd the fractions. I know in the denominator has to be the factors of this, which would be x minus 4, x minus 2. At this point, I have no idea what the numerators would be, so I'm going to call them A and B for now. Once I have this set up, then I forget about the left-hand side, and I just think about, I just actually start adding these fractions. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by x minus 2, and this one by x minus 4, top and bottom. And that will give me... AX, I'm going to skip a step here, minus 2A plus BX minus 4B over that denominator. Because I know they're going to have common denominators, I just kind of added them up. Well, in order for that to be true, this numerator has to be the same as this numerator. So I'm going to have an X equation and a number equation. So let's see, a plus b has to equal 3, all the x stuff, and minus 2a plus b has to equal minus 4. So we could multiply the thing by 2 so the a's drop out. I'm going to multiply the bottom one just to be different by minus 1 so that the b's will drop out. So that'll give me a plus b equals 3, and positive 2a minus b equals positive 4. So the b's drop out, I get 3a equals 7, so a equals 7 thirds. Let me just make sure I didn't make any errors here. Yeah. Oh, I made an error. So, glad I caught this. AX plus BX equals 3X minus 2A minus 4B equals minus 4. Well, I feel bad that that was recorded in a video, but I guess it just shows you you got to be careful when you walk through these. So when you're going through... Uh, just go nice and slow. It's really easy, as you just saw, to have a little slip up. And that one little slip up would throw everything else I do off. So let's see here. Uh, I'm going to, actually I am going to make that a 2. That just appeals to me. So 2a plus 2b is 6. We'll recopy this. And those go away. Minus 2b equals 2. So b equals negative 1. Okay, great. Um, what is a going to be? A, you can use either equation. Actually, I'll show you. You, don't, you never do both, but I'll show you you can use both. So if b is minus 1, this would become a minus 1 equals 3. And this one will become minus 2a plus 4 equals minus 4. So let's see, I have a equals 4, minus 2a equals minus 8, a equals... So you don't got to solve it twice. I'm just showing you it totally doesn't matter which equation you pick. You just plug that in for the variable and you find the other one. So what I know now so a minus 1 equals 3, a equals 4. I now know a and b so my answer would be this is the question what does that equal? Well, that equals 
a goes over the x minus 4, and b goes over the x minus 2. Now I could write plus a minus 1 over x minus 2, but that's just weird. Uh, this is the same as minus 1, right? 4 minus, right? <clears throat> so that would be my answer right there. That is that uh, decomposed. Just doing a quick mental check here. Yeah, that works. Okay, I hope that was a little clearer. Let's do one more. I know I'm pushing my luck, but let's crank this up to a cubic denominator instead of a, a quadratic. So we'll, we have three terms instead of two. What am I at? 15 minutes. So we'll try to walk through this, hopefully without error. So we want to decompose the fraction. Well, like I always tell my pre-calculus students, if you go into calc and you don't know your pre-calc, then it's, it's just tough because, like, look at that. We have to factor that denominator. Um, so when I look at it, I see that this is a grouping problem. So I could pull, I'll do this in red. I'm just focusing on the denominator here. If I pull an x squared out of the first two terms and a minus 1 out of the second two terms, then I can pull the x plus 2 out of both. I'll write like this. And that would leave me with x squared here minus 1. And that's a difference of perfect squares. Right? So in math, if you want to keep, but you can't let go of the stuff you learned before. You, you, you have to retain those skills. So here's my denominator. There it's factored. Notice that they are distinct, all different from each other. And they're linear. So this is going to be and I have no idea what the numerators are, so it's a plus b plus c. All right. So I don't this was just kind of to get me there. Now how would I do this? Well, to get a common denominator, I would have to multiply this one by both of those, which is x squared minus 1 when you put them together. I have to multiply this one by both of those, which is x squared plus x minus 2. And I have to multiply this one by both of those, which is x squared plus 3x plus 2. And that's going to give me 5x plus 7 over this denominator equals ax squared minus a plus bx squared plus bx minus 2 plus cx squared plus 3cx plus 2c. Oh, almost left out the b here. Okay. And, you know, technically those are both over x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2 here and here. But those are just going to go away in the next step anyway. Now look, I've got three kinds of terms. I've got squared terms, x terms, and constant terms. So let's see, x squareds, x's, and constants. I have A plus B plus C equals, there's not one over there, so zero. For my X's, I have no A's. B plus 3C equals 5. And for constants, I have negative A minus 2b plus 2c equals 7. And that gives me another system that I have to solve. So this one's a little bit harder. It's not crazy hard, but what, 
what we're going to do is we're going to take these two and add them together because the A's will drop out. You see that? So if I take this and this and add them column-wise, then those go away, and I'm left with negative B plus 3C equals 7. Now notice that this equation that came out of these two has the same variables in the one I haven't used yet. So now I'm going to pair those up. I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull this one that I haven't used forward. And look, I can add them column-wise and these drop out as is. And I get 6C equals 12, so C equals 2. One down, two to go. i got to figure out, see, I know what C is. I need A and B. Well, how am I going to get that? Well, you can take this and plug it into any one of these. I'm going to take this and plug it into that equation right there. So if C is 2, then B plus 6 is 5, and B equals negative 1. Now that I know B and C, I'm going to take those both and put them into this equation because it's the simplest. And I have A minus 1 plus 2 equals 0. A plus 1 is 0, so A is minus 1. So there we go. All I have to do is state my answer now. So what is this when you decompose it, when you break it down? It is negative 1 over that plus negative 1 over that, plus 2 over this. Um, and that's pretty awkward, so we want to definitely pull this minus here. And I would actually pull this minus out front also. So there is my fraction decomposed. All right, We're, the next step is to have you jump in and try something.